Bloop a doop a doo. Bloop a doop a da ba Hey everybody, um, Michael and I'm Molly. And today we're going to be talking about setting themes in Chrono Trigger. So when we did this for Final Fantasy VI, we used character themes, and I was going to do character themes again for Chrono Trigger, but there really aren't as many, and I feel like they're not used in the same way in the game. Much more of the music in Chrono Trigger is about setting. Molly is not a gamer, has not played Chrono Trigger, doesn't really know much of what I it's about. I don't even know what it is. Yeah. I've never so, even heard of it before. What I'm gonna have Molly do is listen to a handful of these musical themes that I picked from the game that have to do more with the setting. And then Molly, what I'm going to want you to do is to describe the setting. Okay. As you probably can guess from the name of the game, Chrono Trigger has to do with time travel. There's a lot of time travel in the game to different time periods. One of the things that I want you to sort of guess is what time period it is. Mm. I won't tell you what they are ahead of time, but you can be like prehistoric or medieval or something like that. Okay, so they're all the time periods are like related to like actual real life history. They roughly correspond with our time periods in human civilization. Okay. Are there time um, periods like steampunk and I won't tell uh, you. the future? <laughs> I, <and> won't, I, <laughs> I will not tell you. Okay. <laughs> and the ones I picked, I picked a few that I just really liked. I picked a few that I thought were really quite clear and a couple that were less clear. So mm. there are a couple that you might not be able to guess. Along with picking the time, you can also like, where is this? In the world. Yeah, it's not a real world. In the situation. universe. Well, it's in... <laughs> no, like, are we in a desert? Are we on the okay. ocean? type of thing. All right, so let's give this a shot with the first one. Okay, so there's like a, a percussion instrument that feels like a tabla and then there's these like bells that feel almost like, um, is gamela on the wrong word? No. So I'm getting a place that is in the east, but that is not a time period. So I don't know because I think the time period could be any sort of pre ultra modern time because I don't know, folk music is forever, but maybe folk music gets infiltrated by popular music as you get more and more contemporary. I guess I'm feeling tribal. Far East, not Far East, but East. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, military drums uh, and cymbals, fanfare, trumpet fanfare. It's either some kind of military fortress or it is a royal court of some kind. So that makes me think pre-modern, maybe sometime in the late middle ages yeah there's a timpani there's a snare there's a trumpet and then there's i guess a quasi string or something that is in there yeah but it does feel all very grand monumentous mm -hmm. and the snares immediately make me think military is this the good guy's castle or the bad guy's castle oh this is triumphant music this is a good guy yeah, yeah. okay harps it's like debussy all of a sudden <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, very Debussy. <laughs> I'm getting Monet water lilies. <laughs> I'm getting sunlight coming through forest leaves. Oh, and now it's a little spooky wooky all of a sudden. Minor key. So this could be, it's like a forest, but it's like maybe a spooky forest. Mm. But it's not super intimidating. It's just kind of mysterious. Mm. Again, that's not a time period, but maybe if we're in a forest, we're in a place that is pre-industrial, pre-human impact. Uh, if I have to guess a time period. I like the harps though. It yeah. really does sound like WC. This is one of the hard ones. Are you saying I got it wrong? We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, where, where am I going with this? It's happy sounding. It's in a major key, but there's that drum again and, and ooh, a penny whistle which makes it feel, again, sort of tribal, mm -hmm. but it's a different tribal. I feel like we are in the global south. <laughs> we are in a place where maybe there's like a marketplace. Maybe there uh, is people bustling around, but they are people that don't have access to technology. They don't have, you know, modern conveniences, but they are happy. They have everything they need. They have fresh mangoes <laughs> <laughs> and coconuts, right? <laughs> there's palm trees and maybe something like that somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So this sounds quite modern and urban. This sounds almost like hip hop music. Like we are in a, a city. There's maybe a boombox playing. There could be break dancers. There could be a club to dance in. There could be neon lights. There could be cars moving fast. 
Oh yeah, that that little break right there, right? <laughs> that little drum break. Mm. That's like literally where the word break dancing comes from, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what I think. So it's modern. It's very modern. Okay, this feels mysterious again. There's that tinkling that makes it feel like maybe stars or like little glints of light, maybe coming through stained glass windows in a church because you have this sort of almost solemn music. So yeah, I'm getting church energy or some kind of holy place. That's not a time period, but I think, you know, that kind of religious holy place makes me think it's early, earlier than modern. Of course, religion has kind of always existed. So I'm finding time period harder than setting, basically. Okay. That's yeah. Fine. Okay. So pastoral, a farm, maybe someplace idyllic, someplace where Life is slow, where there's sunshine, and it's quiet, and maybe there's chickens picking around <laughs> in the yard. There might be fields of wheat swaying <laughs> in the wind. <laughs> you know, I think of like the opening scenes of The Princess Bride, you know, when it's like, farm boy, fetch me that picture, <laughs> right? As you wish. That's what I think of. It's simple music for simple folk. Okay, so this is um, a little bit menacing. There is caution here. It feels like a place where you have to be sneaky because you don't want to be caught. There's dark shadows that you might be darting from one to the next. I'm thinking of like in a video game, right? There might be like a patrol that's going back and forth that you have to like dodge or time just right that you're getting past it. There might be like some kind of like dungeon feeling with like, you know, like the dripping from the ceiling and like cobwebs is kind of what I'm getting. Or maybe even like a cemetery. It's darkness, it's not fully bright light. It's dark blue light. You know, like when you're in a stage play, when they want it to seem like it's nighttime, they use a blue light because if they use no light, you wouldn't be able to see them. <laughs> okay, so we have like a kind of groovy bass guitar riff. Oh, that little clap. Okay, so this is action, right? So maybe um, an athletic arena uh, or some place where you have to prove your mettle. Oh, that's interesting. Now that's a little bit spooky. See, it changed moods on me. I don't know what to do with that now. See, okay, I can't not hear this video game music, which I think is part of the problem because what I'm picturing is like a boss fight. You know how like you, you go in and then like suddenly like the music changes to the boss fight music. Like that's what I'm imagining. And that this is all boss fight music. So I guess the boss, what kind of a boss would it be? It's probably, he's not one of the scarier bosses, but he's hard to, he, he's hard to kill. Because if he was easy to kill, they wouldn't need so many different musical transitions because it's a long boss fight is what it makes me think. Okay. Sorry, that's video, that's not <laughs> setting. That's just me picturing somebody playing video games and going, oh, oh, it's, his bar is getting lower. <laughs> you did it, you know, you're getting there. <laughs> but I don't, I don't know what to say about the setting. Is this one of the hard ones? I didn't think so, but I, I could be wrong. Hmm, harps again, but it's minor key harps. Okay, and then there's like this bass guitar underneath it. It feels like oh, I'm about to hear an 80s power ballad. <laughs> Music is interesting harmonically. That little uh, tambourine hit is interesting too. So that whistle is almost making me feel like we're in the East again. There's also that wall. And now I'm like wondering if that's supposed to be, because you had mentioned, and maybe I'm reading too much into it, but you're like, maybe the time period is prehistoric. And I'm like, oh, maybe the time period is prehistoric. <laughs> because maybe there's like an animal in the distance that's going, Whoa. like, <laughs> <laughs> that I can hear kind of, this is Jurassic Park. <laughs> but it feels not menacing or intimidating, just otherworldly, maybe. Maybe that's why I can't place it. Maybe it's not on this planet. I feel like the light is twilight, like an orange light, you mm -hmm. know? Last it's one. It's orange music. What can I say? <laughs> okay, so this sounds like a church's track. <laughs> it's synth with a lot of reverb, right? <laughs> it's serious, intensity. So I have to be focused. And where is that needed? Maybe a place where I have to watch my back. Maybe a place where I have to do something that's physically dangerous, like climbing a rock face or... Or, oh, you know what? Maybe I'm at sea actually. Maybe I'm on a sailing ship. So that would be pre-modern because the ship does not have engines. It has sails that are being blown by the wind and there's waves. 
Yeah, I think I'm at C. I guessed all wrong. <laughs> what I thought was interesting when I was trying to plan this is like, this is one of the most like lauded video game scores. It's it's really interesting, actually. Yeah. I think all the music is engaging. Yeah. And I, I agree that this is a really fantastic score. It's one of my favorites. But I think it doesn't pull the same weight in storytelling as the other mm-hmm. one that we did, mm-hmm. which makes Final Fantasy VI's score just a little bit more interesting to me because it also is helping tell the story in a way that this one is not. So let's go through again. And as we listen, I'll explain what they are. So, okay, okay so this one, I'm trying to remember what you said. I said it was the East. Yes. I said there was a tabla and yeah. a sitar. Yeah. And a gamelon. <laughs> so this one doesn't explain the time very well, I don't think. The setting, it's its a very magical setting. So in this world, between the prehistory time and the medieval time, this is in between. So it's sort of like, I guess, equivalent to ancient Greek mm, times to us. Okay. I think but, that tracks with what I'm hearing. But in this, there's a definite break between the haves and the have-nots. Mm. The haves actually live in the sky, uh, in these magically floating islands, and they're wealthy and, and they can all use magic. And everyone who can't use magic lives on the Earth's surface during what is essentially the Ice Age. So it's cold. Yeah. So, but this is this is the world above. This is the world of the haves. Mm. So I, I think this one sort of gets at magical more than anything, mm. at least to my ears. Then. We- <laughs> We've got the one that you nailed. This I one. don't know how you couldn't nail it. Right, exactly. This is the castle music used in two time periods because it's the same castle. Mm. Uh, most of the places you visit in all of the time periods. Yeah, I mean, I think just generally in music everywhere, like snare drums and trumpet fanfares say royalty, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or... At least in uh, Western Europe mm. view of things. But really, like, most Japanese fantasy games are based on, like, medieval Europe. Mm. This is for both the medieval time and the present day. The present day in this game is sort of, like, steam-powered. Like, they don't have electricity, but they've got steamboats. I guess there is electricity, because one of the characters is an it's inventor. Like, it's like proto-electricity. Right? Yeah, it's like yeah. it's like it's gonna go haywire any yeah. second kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Next, this is one of the ones that was hard. I don't remember what you said about Debussy. it. Yeah, this and is, water lilies. This, this is the one you said was forest. This one is sort of tricky. As they're going through different warps to different time periods, they discover that if too many people go through a warp at the same time, you end up at no time. <gasps> and this is the end of time. There's a street lamp. And a guy sitting on it. That's so spooky. And, and he's he's a good guy. But yeah. he's like, you can leave from this place, but only three of you can go through a warp at, at a time. So everyone else just hangs out there and is waiting. And is, it's lonely oh. and boring. That's cool. But That's also, very cool. But also like spooky. And, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Like there's not an immediate threat. I think you said marketplace for this yeah. one. And that's basically exactly what it is. This is like the hometown fair is happening down at the town square. This is the, the musical yeah. place at the fair. But you you got the general vibe yeah. of it. It's, it's playful. It's joyful. Yeah. There are people selling stuff. There are games. And are there fresh mangoes? Probably not. Oh. Okay, this is the one that you said was on the city streets. Mm-hmm. Yes, but this is on the city streets after the end of the world. So mm. like, there are very few people left. Uh, this is the ruin. This sounds like a party. This is the ruins of a factory that you have to go through. Oh, um, I can see factory. That's cool. Yeah. It is, it's, just kind, it's kind of a groove. Uh-huh. You also nailed this one. This takes place in a cathedral, but all of the holy people working there have been replaced by monsters in human disguise. Oh. So, so, so it's spooky. And this is in the medieval times, but the, the time is not really specific in this one. You basically got the vibe of this one too. You were saying countryside. Pastoral. Yeah. This is in the present day outside of your home. Is like my in, home a farm? No, it's, it's not a farm, but it's it's a small town kind All of feel. All I want is for my home to be a farm, Michael. <laughs> I don't remember what you said for this one. I think I had a difficulty with this one. This one is in the future after the end of the world. This Camp. is the one where I said you're walking through a dungeon and there's patrols going yeah, back and yeah. forth. Yeah. So the, this is when you find some people and they're depressed. They have a machine that can keep them alive, but they don't have food. They won't die, but they're miserable. Is this whole game very Doctor Who? Is that... Yeah. Kind of, yeah. This one, you were saying boss fight. It's not very... <laughs> <laughs> this isn't energetic enough, I don't think, to be a boss fight. This is in prehistory. You're on a mountain and 
fighting dinosaurs and stuff like that. Yeah, dinosaurs. <laughs> That's kind of cool. I'm on a mountain. You said Twilight. This one is a forest theme. You go through the same forest mm. in several different time periods. To me, this one... is that the light is not orange. Yeah. It does, to me, sound like there's little bits of light filtered through the leaves. Yeah, I, I hear that. Yeah, light filtering through the trees, and maybe it's like a breeze. Mm -hmm. It's mysterious, but not quite scary. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this is one that you were saying is something that's difficult and treacherous. Yeah. This is back in that sort of, I guess, Greek mm. time, mm -hmm. but this is in a palace built under the ocean. So you, you were saying this might be on the sea. This is a, in a palace built under the ocean. It's a bad place. You're fighting your way through trying to get to the queen of that time period is obsessed with this evil power that she's getting. It's making her more powerful and like she can me. live forever. Yeah, And you're trying to stop her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nobody should try and stop me, though. <laughs> There'll be consequences. <laughs> I think that was sort of an interesting exercise. Not as successful as the Final Fantasy VI one, but I was sort of anticipating that going in. Yeah, I think, I mean, I guess, like, if we want to talk about, like, how sounds create moods, I mean, I think it's pretty easy to see, right? It's like when you're using certain instrumentations that can create a feel of folk music versus formal music or popular music versus classical music. And then I think that there's certain sounds that create a feeling of light, create a feeling of dark. I think you can create a mood and you just sort of have to match the mood to the place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I do think that this soundtrack is excellent and it's one of my favorites at least on the Super Nintendo. Well, that's about it for this one. Thanks everybody for watching. Uh, give this video a like if you liked it. Give it a pity like if you didn't like it. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. We talk about music and video games mostly. And... Maintain your groovy selves. <laughs> Maintain your groovy selves. <laughs> yeah.